Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Breaking 90 podcast. I'm your host, Alex Harriman, and I've got a special guest here with me today, Kelly Sarlo. She's a good friend of mine, and she's also worked here with Breaking 90 in the past. So I'm really excited to have you here, Kelly. Um, Kelly is a medium, medical intuitive, energy healer, psychic, and life coach. That's a lot to remember. <laughs> <Thank you>. uh, <laughs> many, many different skills. So that's cool. I'm, I'm excited to dive into it a bit. But um, Kelly, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you so much. This is exciting. Um, why don't we start off by, uh, well, I'd like, I'd like to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself a bit more in depth and, and kind of tell people who you are, what you do and who you help. Sure. It's a loaded question. I think I'll start off by saying that because as people are hearing, there's so many titles. Um, so for myself, with my businesses that I'm running, I have two very distinct practices. One with the first four things that you had listed, which is much more of the intuitive things. So medium, medical intuitive, psychic energy healer, as well as past lives. I do soul contracts, um, a number of different things that help people heal energetically. Um, and emotionally. And then there's the other component, which is coaching. So I do life coaching for people all over the world, but um, international clients, which is a lot of fun. And when you say, who do you help? It's such a tough question to answer. And I'm sure as you know, you know, when you're talking to advertising and marketing people, they're like, what's your basis? And you're just like, oh God, anyone who wants help. Um, so, you know, for the intuitive portion, a lot of it is about closure and emotional um, stability that you're offering them. With coaching, it's a lot about breaking patterns, um, giving them, you know, sometimes the first cheerleader in their life um, and breaking things down into manageable pieces for them. So there's a lot of hats that I wear in both businesses, uh, but it's a lot of fun with all the variety. So that's cool. what I, I spend my days going in between those, those, two, uh, those two roles. That's awesome. I like that. So uh, as far as the life coaching standpoint, like what do people n normally come to you for help with? Or is that kind of, like, kind of different for each client? Yeah, I would say, you know, one of the first things that I ask in my life coaching assessments is what brought you here in the first place? Because I have my assessment of all the different areas that I want to go through and talk to them, you know, where's your area of distress? Where's your area of support in your life? And, you know, what's the main focus? But the first thing is what got you here? What was the breaking point to say, I need a coach or I need help mm -hmm. potentially? Mm -hmm. And that's different for everyone. But when it comes to who do I end up helping, it's mainly people who are looking for communication help where they don't know how to a maybe necessarily identify what they're truly feeling and where their frustrations are and then also how to identify that for other people and articulate it so communication is a huge thing um, also emotion regulation we're so out of touch at large as a society with how to feel our emotions let alone regulate them uh, and then how do you go ahead and communicate that then with all of that stress where the emotions overwhelm us, our critical thinking goes down the tube. So it's these three components that I really focus on in all of my life coaching sessions, no matter what brought the individual to, uh, to those sessions. That's amazing. That's, that's a really, really cool thing that you're offering. And it, it's neat to hear that because I mean, um, obviously from a health and fitness standpoint, that's where my coaching lies, but there's certainly some aspects of what we do that overlap with one another, which is really neat. Yes. Um, as I think all coaching should kind of overlap, right? Because it's, it's mm -hmm. a similar thing that we're doing. Um, cool. So you, you started with breaking 90, uh, last year in June. Yep. In June. Um, you reached out to me and you were, you were looking to make some changes in, in your life and in where you were at. So why don't we start by you talking about where you were at, at that point, when you, when you first reached out to me? Sure. There's a number of different reasons that I called. Um, so I'm just trying to recall exactly where I was in June because things have changed since. Uh, but I do recall at that point having a lot of conversations with my mom, who was about to turn 60, um, who has found fitness and health to be something uh, really supportive in her life, but didn't come into it until about her late late forties, early fifties. And I've just watched her really grow. Um, and everything that she was talking to me about, you know, what she was learning was all about longevity, sustainability. And mm. I remember thinking, Jesus, I remember turning 16 and not thinking I would ever be in my thirties. <laughs> and, you know, you put things off thinking I'll never get to that point in my life. And looking at my mom who was 60, yeah. having another one of those moments. And I was like, I need to start yesterday 
or today, uh, working towards a sustainable life because I don't want to be diagnosed with something later in life, wishing I had done things differently. I think, I think that's really powerful and really cool that you had that deep of an understanding of what your, your big reasons, your big motivations for wanting to make change were, because often when people first reach out to us, uh, it'll be like people saying, I want to lose weight or I want to, I want to, uh, get fitter, get more toned. But I mean, there, there's almost always a bigger reason that you want to become healthier. And, mm-hmm. and just to say, I want to lose weight. Like if, if your only goal is to lose weight, you're probably not going to be that much happier when you lose five or 10 or 15 pounds, if that's your only yeah. reason. Um, so it's important. And that's part of our intake process is figuring out why somebody wants to make pro- progress and, and why it's important to them and what it's going to accomplish getting them there. So Um, It certainly makes it easier when somebody's as in tune with it as you were in the beginning. Thank you. I also, you know, I had started um, dating my partner now five, five and a half years ago, and he is super in shape with regards to biking. His legs are incredible. He's got biker legs and I can't keep up with him when we go for walks. I can't keep up during hikes. He's just, that's where all of his power comes from. So I remember trying to do things in common, uh, whether it was hiking and walking or, you know, kayaking and canoeing. And I, I wasn't enjoying our quality time together because I was struggling physically, even though I liked the activity Mm. and not that he was, you know, pushing me to, to do things that were unreasonable, but I knew that I could do more for myself to enjoy my life with him. So that was another motivating factor where it was like, wow, I've really paid no attention to my cardio condition, paid no attention to the muscle that I had when I was younger and playing sports regularly and have completely lost, not can't even blame it on the pandemic, um, but just through, you know, working long hours and and less activity as I got older. And, and I mean, you, you mentioned as, uh, in your youth, you were an athlete and you competed in lots of sports and it, it just kind of comes naturally, right? Like that athletic, mm-hmm. that athleticism and the strength and the power that you need to perform in those sports. You don't need to put in, um, as much as the specific training back then. Like if you, if you're playing sports several times a week, that usually carries you as an athlete. Yep. Um, whereas as we get older, we notice the muscle mass may, might not be there. We might start getting tight, lose some mobility, um, mm-hmm. So the, the, you, what you're saying certainly is very common. We see it a lot where people, um, once they're past their teenage years, they start to notice maybe, like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm not the athlete that I was when I was in high yeah. school. Um, and, you know, one of the things that sticks out, sorry to interrupt, was that I had said to you on the call, I'm not in terrible shape. I'm mm-hmm. not super unhappy with my condition of my body or, or the shape of my body. It was that I didn't want to let myself get to the point of having to claw my way back right. from a lack of health. Cause I thought that was going to be a much more difficult thing to do. So I thought now as a good as time as any to, um, to begin with whatever foundation I currently have and just build upon it. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's always, I mean, the best day is always today and the second best day yep. is always tomorrow. Right. You've heard that <laughs> saying before, and it, it's so, so true. Um, no, no reason to ever put it off. Um, one other thing that I want to touch on that I think is really cool is you being a coach and feeling comfortable to have a coach, because this is something that people are always very surprised when I talk to them about. And it's, I've hired, I've hired business coaches for myself. I've hired sports coaches for myself. I've even hired fitness coaches for myself. Good for Um, you. And people, people will be like, well, why would you hire a fitness coach when you are a fitness coach? And it, it, it really like, it comes down to accountability. It's not that I don't know mm-hmm. what to do, but yeah. at the end of the day, almost every person who comes to me deep down knows what they should be doing or, or a few things they could be doing better. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not a surprise to anybody when I tell them to eat some more vegetables or drink some more water or sleep more (laughs) or exercise more. Like these are, these are the foundations that everybody understands. And it's the same for me, just because I have maybe a slightly deeper understanding of this stuff doesn't mean that the accountability factor doesn't play a role. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, I think it's cool that um, you're comfortable having coaches in your life when you are a coach. Um, How do you feel about that whole process? I have to credit my mom. I remember being 12 years old in grade six and she said, okay, we're going to see a massage therapist. I want you to know what physical touch, appropriate physical touch feels like. 
And I remember thinking, oh, that's neat. And seeing my first uh, female massage therapist where, you know, we went through a consent process. She would walk me through what she was going to do. And I really got introduced to the, the realm of health. And, you know, she asked me different questions that no one had asked me before, got me thinking about my body and my overall health, mental and emotional, um, in different ways. And it just sort of snowballed from there where it was like, now we're going to go see a chiropractor. Now we're going to go see a physio. And it wasn't necessarily that I was in pain or there was something Mm. wrong. It was, Mm -hmm. it was a checkup and then sometimes just a a check in or a tune up to see if things were, were, you know, ticking like they should be. So from a really young age, I learned to have a team. And I think, you know, having that ingrained so young and knowing how a team is supposed to work together Mm -hmm. when you become a coach or any one of those health professionals, um, to me, it was just natural that you, you wanted all the skills and all of the brain power from these different people. So becoming one myself was just like, okay, who do I want to put on my team and having clientele, as I'm sure, you know, you want the right people to refer to that you can trust, you know, this, this relationship that you've built with your clients, handing them over to someone else who's going to take good care of them. Mm. And my motto, as I've said to you, is every coach needs a coach. Absolutely it's not just about accountability. It's also about inspiration. You know, you've said so many things to me that I've taken back into my own coaching process to say, Hey, coach Alex says, uh, and I think that's really fun because people also get to see when I'm sitting down with them, I'm not saying I came up with everything. I'm not saying this was all my idea and I'm so great. I'm saying I have my team, go find yours, go build yours. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And and first of all, what a what an amazing lesson for your mom to teach you at a yeah. young age. And and that's that's pretty incredible. But um, mm-hmm. w- I think getting into the coaching industry, we always fear that there might not be enough clients, or there might not be enough business to go around, or whatever that might be. And and what you said is is so true that you you can take lessons learned from another coach. I've taken lessons learned from clients and, and oh, yeah. shared them with other clients. And it doesn't, it doesn't weaken us or it doesn't, uh, doesn't limit us in any way. It actually makes us so much stronger as we, as we all share these ideas. I mean, some of the best mm-hmm. coaches in the world, why would I try to recreate what they're doing? If I can, if I can work with a concept that they've already put into place. And I mean, that's, that's their intentions for these things, of course. Um, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Not to mention people are going to connect with you differently, right? Like people, Mm. there's many people I've met who do not like my style. I'm very direct. Um, I like to build in humor, but I'm not going to beat around the bush. And so if that works for you, fantastic. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. Um, you, You have to find the right teacher. Absolutely. And, and it's, that's another part of the reason that we do such an in-depth intake process, because I need to, I need to feel a hundred percent confident, not only that I can help somebody, but that I want to help them and that they're going to be a good fit with us because there there certainly isn't the right fit for everybody. Um, And over the past year, I've worked side by side with close to a hundred different online coaches, which is a pretty big number. And all of us have different styles and all of us offer something unique. So we've, we've gotten to the point now where we're comfortable with the fact that if we don't think somebody is a good fit for us, there's 99 other coaches one yeah. of them will be a good fit. We, we're comfortable referring to each other. And that's, that's what makes the fitness and health, uh, the whole health industry stronger, really. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. So you, there's a few things I want to touch on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep order so I don't lose things as we go, because I think there's a lot of important stuff we could touch on today. But um, let's start with what are some of the key takeaways that you learned in your first 90 days with breaking 90. So when you started, you started on a 90 day journey, correct? Yes. Um, So that's, that's typically what we do with people is we started on a 90 day journey. And my, my goal for that is to get people uh, familiar with online coaching, because it is still a relatively new concept. And a lot of people don't really know what to expect with online coaching. I mean, I think 
a lot of the general public when they see online coach think that I probably stand in from front of a camera and teach aerobics <laughs> classes over zoom. And oh, really? It, oh, that's yeah. not what I had in mind at all. And, and I think some, some people do have a better understanding, but the people who have never considered online coaching, I think that's um, often the misconception right. of what an online fitness coach is. Um, so I think 90 days is a really good chance for people to learn what online coaching is, if they're going to like it, if it works well for them. Uh, but also my goal kind of with every client in 90 days is to teach them what they would need to do to do it on their own. Hmm. And, and that doesn't mean that everybody will be able to do it on their own, because just like we talked about, I've hired coaches for myself. I've been, I've been in the fitness industry for 13 years and I still hire coaches for myself. Hmm. It's not that I don't know what to do. It's, it's, that I want accountability, I want support, and I want somebody else looking out for me. But in that 90 days, I want to teach you what you need to do, right? Yeah. So so in your first 90 days, what, what are your key takeaways if I okay. put you on the spot? Oh, this is great. It's going to really make me think. So the first one that I know was my biggest takeaway, which pissed me off first, uh, but, but I'll get there, is you're, um, you were at a point in, in the program where you were asking us every single day, I'm sure you had like a, a published tool in Facebook, what are your top three priorities that went yeah. out at a certain time every morning? <laughs> yeah. And I remember, you know, it was the first thing I did every single morning. Like many other people, I wake up, I go sit on the toilet and I pull out my phone and I'm like, there's my <laughs> what's, you know, what are your top three priority questions? And um you know, I was excited to answer it the first two or three times. Then I was like, man, this is like, this is going to continue. Okay. <laughs> and at first it was a struggle for me because I was like, okay, well, I said that yesterday. Okay. Well, I said that yesterday. And then it clicked where it was like, right, but these are your top three priorities. Mm -hmm. Why would they consistently change? Why wouldn't they stay the same if the goal that you're working towards hasn't changed? Yeah. And so I became more comfortable with that not only as a concept, but throughout the day, as I was structuring things, because I'm very much an agenda person, you know, when you have clients, your whole life runs on it. Hmm. I started making room for those top three priorities. It wasn't do my day, throw up a Hail Mary and hope they got done by the end of my day. It was actually scheduling them in because a, the accountability factor that I had, I had given or handed over to you and said, hold me accountable. Yeah. But also, you know, I, I made this commitment and vocalized that this was a goal. So it's in my agenda and I'm, I've, I've chunked out time for it. Cool. Do you mind if I jump in in between? Yeah, right, your please. Key takeaways? Okay. Um, so I, I love that you mentioned that I, I got that one from one of my first business coaches and it was, as, as most people listening probably know, we, we have to do lists that are like, 30 items long and it's super mm. overwhelming and you you knock two or three or four or five of those things off and it doesn't even feel like you've made a dent in your to-do list and so I was running into that when I was first starting my online coaching business because there's so many little things that can be pulling at your attention so they he forced me to to pick my top three priorities every single day and, and whether they were business related or health related or family related, whatever it was, you have three priorities. And if you accomplish those three things, then you've had a successful day. If you do anything above and beyond, that's amazing, but it's not necessary in order to have a successful day. Because often that all or nothing mindset that we talk about so much will lead people to look at a list of 30 items and do nothing because it's so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's where that came from. And it's, it's interesting that you love it so much because I had people mention the same thing as you, that over time, they're getting bored of answering the same question day after day after day. But, but there is certainly something powerful about sticking to that. Yeah. Um, you, you've, I'm sure you've noticed that we, we have introduced some different questions mm -hmm. in the morning now, but it's the same concept. It's the same yeah. concept of keeping you to that. So if it's okay to share, like I took that uh, concept that we were doing in Breaking 90 and I took that into my coaching practice myself, especially with, um, I'm working with community living here in North Bay to coach uh, their frontline staff, their managers and their directors, which has been a lot of fun. And so I took this concept of top three priorities and added on the expectation to rate the sense of urgency uh, mm. and the amount of energy that this task was going to take. Cool. So when we put it with a sense of urgency, this allowed people to understand if you put it on your task list as a top three priority on a Monday, 
and it doesn't get done and it winds up on Tuesday again and Wednesday again and Thursday again. We look at a pattern over the course of a week or two weeks and ask ourselves, if it got pushed that many times, perhaps was it responsible adjustment because something else came up that took over top priority because that's a very crisis-based industry? Or was it that it was not in fact a priority <laughs> and shouldn't been on the list until Thursday? Yeah. So it's really neat because it helps people understand in a broader scope, not just within fitness, okay, maybe I was lying to myself. Okay, mm. maybe I wanted to look good. Okay, maybe this is something that I really truly don't actually want and I just have to get real about it. So um, it's, it's been really fun to kind of take that one tool and morph it. Uh, I've, and, and I've seen a lot of good, good effects with it. That's awesome. Another lesson that I did directly into that, and I won't get too deep into this because I, I can touch on it further another time, but is I took a, they, my coach got me to make a graph uh, with four quadrants. And in each quadrant, mm -hmm. there was, um, there was, you, you had to divide all of your daily tasks into these four quadrants. So across the top was urgent and non-urgent. And then down the side was important and not important. So that when they crossed paths, it made the four different quadrants. And it was, it was really an eye opener to see how many not important, not urgent tasks you're, you're spending your day on. Mm -hmm. And, and like, I made this list and I took the time to make this list. And then he's like, okay, cross that box out. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, that's my Forget life. <laughs> um, but, but it's cool that you've taken that and put your own spin on it. And I think, I think that's really neat. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's Two more go. things, right? Okay. Sure. sure. Biggest takeaways. Um, this, this might sound like an oxymoron given everything I just said, but um, one thing I was not expecting at all when I signed up for Breaking 90 was your community. I had no idea that when I signed up that I would be technically working with other people. I thought it was going to be a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one communication as well, not just, you know, you teaching a lesson or me watching one of your pre-recorded um, fitness workouts. I, I did not know that there was going to be a community being publicly in the sense that we were all together, but privately in a Facebook group being held accountable all at the same time. Mm. And I, I remember thinking, oh, wow. Okay. Like I, it, it was great. And then I thought, why would I be um, any less than happy with this given that I signed up for accountability? Yeah. So one of the biggest takeaways was a reminder about continuing to build my own community, not just my health team and the people that were gonna hold me accountable, but the community that was going to inspire me as well. So that, that was something that was a wonderful surprise um, and something that I've continued to do in my personal life. Yeah, that, that's, I don't wanna say the biggest game changer in my business, but it's, it's definitely one of the biggest game changers for Breaking 90. When I first started out uh, in 2018, I did everything one on one. So what you what you know from my application and the one on one messaging, it was completely individual. All like you would message me if you needed anything, and I'd message mm -hmm. you back. And once I started getting deeper and deeper into this, and I started, I pretty much work with uh, clients who are busy women. Like that's that's typically who who we work with. Um, we do certainly have some outliers, but the goal is to work with people who don't have the time to put like three hours of training into their day and spend every weeknight meal prepping. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's not real life. So we want to people, we want to help people navigate real life and figure out how to fit fitness, health and make progress with real life. And when, when I found that so many clients were on a similar journey, obviously none of them are the same. I <laughs> I realized like these, these people need to help each other too. They, mm -hmm. they have so much to offer that they're not seeing. Like when you, when you hear everything from me day after day after day, it's, it's good, but it's not the same as hearing somebody else who had the same struggle as you, mm -hmm. how they dealt with it, how they overcame it. And then vice versa, you can do the same for them. Um, it seems like when people first start out, they're often shy in the group setting. They do a lot of the one-on-one -on -one messaging with myself and that's fine. Yeah. And they observe the Facebook group, the community. And then, you know, after 30 days, they, they start participating a little bit more. And then after yeah. 60 days, it, it's like the role switches and they're, they're offering support to the new people coming in. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's such a neat transformation in, in yeah. that 90 day journey. Yeah. Very enjoyable. Um, am I okay to go to the third one? Yeah. 
your 80% rule. It was probably the thing that saved me from quitting. Mm. Um, not because the program isn't good or, or, or what I exactly what I needed, but the 80% rule was a mindset that put me on the right track, mm. uh, for my own self, you know, just saying that 80% of your week or 80% of your month, uh, needs to be healthy. You have to have that room for not leniency necessarily, but to live right to, to be human. So when I'm tracking my food or I'm tracking my fitness and I can remember the 80% rule, I steer, steer clear of perfectionism. Mm -hmm. I steer clear of extreme. Um, and then I, I feel like I still have choice. I still have that, that good sense of control instead of, oh, I've given my life over to this one strict thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've, I've very much enjoyed that. And that has been something I've offered to other people, uh, as well as I've been coaching and, you know, it's just like their eyes light up. It's like, oh my gosh, okay. I can be human. There's room yeah. for error. Yeah. You know, the, the all or nothing mindset is absolutely the number one thing that holds people back from their goals. Yeah. They, they, they start a fitness journey and they wait until January 1st or Monday or the first of the month. And the reason they're doing that is because they fear that they can't, they can't meet somewhere in between all and nothing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've had people reach out to me right before Christmas. I've had people reach out to me right before Easter and say, I want to start as soon as Christmas is done, as soon as Easter is done, as soon as mm -hmm. January 1st comes. And they're always surprised when I say, no, we're going to start now. You did that to me. It wasn't, it wasn't a holiday, but you did that to me and it was great. Uh, and so what you wanted to start on a Monday? Uh, it might not even have been that, like I reached out early June and I think I said, like, I, you know, I'm wrapping my head around it. I think I'm ready to start in July or something. Okay. And you were like, no, yeah, let's yeah. like, let's do it today. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and, and I run into that with almost every single person who reaches out because they say, well, mm -hmm. I haven't got my groceries yet. And I say, you don't even know what you need to eat yet. <laughs> like, yeah. are, you, are you telling me you don't That's have great. any groceries in your house? Yeah. Um, because my goal I mean, certainly I look at what your goals are and where you want to get, but that doesn't mean we have to get there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, not a, there's not a timeline on our health and fitness. I mean, unless you're planning mm -hmm. on getting up on a stage and competing in something, then, then we've created our own timeline. But if your mm -hmm. goal is to get healthier, get fitter, um, feel more confident in your clothes, like if these are your goals, then we don't have a specific timeline. If you get there in 91 days or 84 days, it's not going to make a big difference. Yeah. So I want to take you one step at a time towards your goal, the easiest path of least resistance, one manageable step at a time. Mm -hmm. And if that means that we start today by having one extra serving of vegetables, then that that allows you to start today instead of waiting till Monday. Mm -hmm. Often people will will feel like they need to do that all or nothing. And they'll be like, okay, I'm going to work out five days a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, how many days a week have you been working out up until this? Well, I haven't been working out because I didn't start. Like I'm starting next yeah. week. Remember? <laughs> and, and so I'll yeah. say, well, let's start with a walk today. <laughs> yeah. And, and they'll get back from the walk and be like, okay, coach, now what? Like they're so eager, right? Now what? Do it again tomorrow. Yeah. And, and it like, it blows people's <laughs> mind that that's mm -hmm. that is the way to get started that is the sustainable way to get started and to stick to something for life really yeah yeah um did is there anything in there that that I didn't touch on that you you want to no. touch on more or you feel pretty no. good about that I think I think those are my top three and I think you elaborated really nicely cool um so Quickly, if you're comfortable with it, I want to I want to circle back. So you did the 90 days, uh, say June, July, August, maybe into September a little bit. Yeah. OK. Um, and then after the 90 days, you, you you took off and you did it on your own. And tell me about kind of that process then after your 90 days. How <clears throat> how, do, how did you feel the week after and, and what happened between then and the time that you reached out to me again to come back? Sure. So, and please interject with any questions too. Um, I remember doing the first week on my own and being like, okay, cool. I've got this. This is great. Everything I learned is working. Finished the month of September really strong, went into October feeling all of that motivation. And I, if I look back at the calendar there, October, I crushed. 
Um, and I'll tell you exactly what happened. November 1st hit and I put up my Christmas tree and I was like, I'm getting hot chocolate. Okay. And I had decided, you know, part of my 80% rule, this is going to be one of my days. Yep. And then the days just didn't stop. Mm. So it was like an O on the calendar, you know, so your X's were your, I, I met my goals, your O's uh, were, I did not. Um, and it just, November was a wash for me. And I don't, I couldn't tell you any particular thing mentally or emotionally what happened if it really was going into winter in a pandemic um, or, or what. I just stopped and I started thinking about all the foods that I had probably restricted too much, uh, my own self as a choice when I was in the program. And I just thought, I'm just going to have fun. And then it was Christmas and then it was January and then it was my birthday. And it was just like, I was, I was right back into the mindset of, well, I'll start tomorrow, which I knew wasn't good. I knew mm -hmm. wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I was like, it's the accountability piece. I have all the tips and tools. I'm still a part of, you know, the Facebook group. Once you graduate the first part of breaking 90. And I thought, no, I, I need him to hold me accountable again. So it was just recognizing that it wasn't something I was um, not necessarily not capable of doing myself, but I just clearly wasn't stepping up to do it. And that's okay. I just got honest about it and, you know, put the team back in. I, I love that you recognize that. Um, it, it's interesting. And I don't, I don't really know who it is or what type of person it is, but there's people who finish the first 90 days and they go on to absolutely crush for like, I've had people now more than a year out and I just got a message from somebody yesterday and she's like I just hit a new weight PR I'm down mm. the lowest weight I've ever been I still yeah. feel great thank you so much and this like I haven't worked with her in a year and then there's people that that do the 90 days and they choose to continue right away because they know they're going to need accountability like myself mm -hmm. I always always benefit from accountability people yeah. think I'm insane for always having a business coach because they're like is he, is he still teaching you things? I'm like, he's holding me accountable. <laughs> um, so yes. So it, I don't know why it works well for some people and why people need the accountability and don't need the accountability. But I think this year in general has thrown people a huge curveball with, with COVID and lockdowns and jobs changing and stress and family members might be under different stressors like that. That has changed everything for everybody so it's it's really hard to compare this year to mm -hmm. another year well it's it's also you know the the necessary isolation that we're going through has also mm. put all of our vices in front of our faces and mm. it's it's hard to avoid the truth of it it's certainly not hard to avoid the vices mm -hmm. um but we you know those who are who are willing to be honest about it it's it's right there and we have this opportunity to to make those changes uh you know pre-pandemic we were free to go about our lives avoiding avoiding all of our bad habits and i mm -hmm. think as much as i've struggled um to do well fall off track and get back in it all in a pandemic um everyone's got their different cycles and everyone's ready at different times to to face the truth it, and it's just like our motivation our motivation comes and goes yep. regardless of what stage of our life we're in some some days we're motivated some weeks we're motivated sometimes yep. we aren't um and and what i really love about doing this program for a year is you get to see what the summer's like. You get to see what Christmas mm -hmm. is like. You get to see what all the holidays, the birthdays, the, the vacation. Because most people given an opportunity to do this for 90 days will plan it during a period that they don't have any obstacles because they want to make the most out of it. Yeah. So they'll wait until after a vacation or they'll plan a vacation apart from it. But really, it's really important to learn how to navigate those tougher times. You know what? It's the exact same advice that I was given about dating. Like you should absolutely see, see someone through every season mm. at least once mm. to know what they're really like. Um, and sure. it's the same with your own cycles, right? Because different, different times of the year and different occasions bring about different, slightly different personalities in some of us. <laughs> Yeah. Different yep. stressors. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're right in that. Um, I had another point that I wanted to touch on, but I've lost it. That's <laughs> I've why got I need time. To, that's why I need to take better notes. Um, cool. Is there, uh, is there anything else that you really want to touch on or you feel pretty good about what we've covered here today? 
Oh, I love it. It's, it's fun, natural conversation. Um, I, I've very much enjoyed reflecting whether it was on my own or with you about my experience, um, you know, personally in the fitness program and how it's benefited me overall in my life. So unless you've got more questions and you want to grill me, I'm, I'm good. No, I think that's awesome. I, I really appreciate you coming here and giving an honest look at uh, your experience. And, and I, I always want everything to be honest with people. I mean, I, I don't, I don't try to hide from anybody. People, people will often ask, um, how do breaking 90 clients make so much progress? I mean, over the last year, over COVID, you heard, you heard the term of the COVID 15 people gained 15 pounds because mm-hmm. they, they were out of their gyms or out of their routines and at home or how are breaking 90 clients still making progress? Like, what are you guys doing? That's so magical. So I think it's really cool for you to give an honest look at that because I, I, I tell people like, there's no magic pill. We're not mm-hmm. offering anything magic. There's, there's ruthless accountability yep. and there's people that are ready to put in some work and, and it, it's hard some days. Absolutely. But it, it has to be that consistent work with the accountability and then the support of the team, like you mentioned, um, all of these things combined is, is the reason people are doing so well through such a hard time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's really nothing magical to it. At the end of the day, you look back and you're like, yeah, I, I was consistent for 90 days. I worked yeah. hard for 90 days. I didn't stop on weekends. I didn't stop for holidays. Like, sure, the 80% rule allows you to have those meals and have those days where you, you go and enjoy yourself without binging, as we mm-hmm. call it, minimizing the damage. You still, you still can enjoy yourself without going completely out of control. But if yeah. you look back over ninety days, you're consistent, and that's what that's what makes progress. Yeah, the, those are the two words I always tell my clients. You're going to get so sick of me saying this. Time and consistency are your best friends. Yeah, you need consistency over time to see change, and you need time to actually be consistent uh, to really form new habits. I get people all the time saying, "I need to lose X amount of weight by X date," and I say, "Why?" Well, because <laughs> I want to, because it's summertime, and that's what I want to do, and I want to feel better. Okay, but would you be happy if we lost half of that? Well, Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess so, but it's like, (laughs) it's like, well, where were you last summer? And, and it's, it circles back to that all or nothing mindset where we, we want to lose 60 pounds in 90 days or 60 pounds in a half year. And it, it starts to become (laughs) overwhelming. And, And when you quickly realize you can't sustain that lifestyle, you throw in the towel, you go back to your old habits. But if Mm -hmm. we, if we always aim for those small micro changes, those easy changes, adding a serving of vegetables, drinking more water, sleeping a little bit longer, getting outside for a 20 minute walk, these changes aren't overwhelming, but adding them up consistently and doing it every single week does lead to big results over the long period. You know, you're talking about something, if it's okay, I don't know if you're pressed for time. Um, A concept that I start coaching with is core desired feelings. And it was developed officially, I'll say by Danielle Laporte, who I'm a huge fan of, and I refer to all the time, especially entrepreneurs. She has this concept, core desired feelings that turns goal coaching or goal setting on its head. Mm -hmm. So essentially what's been happening is in large part, our society sets these goals, goals, pardon me, typically on societal standards of Mm -hmm. what we think Mm -hmm. we're supposed to achieve of milestones we think are supposed to be important and it is very much like a Hail Mary that we're like okay once I get there I hope I'm going to feel something good and we don't even know what feeling we're chasing Mm -hmm. and so with core desired feelings we turn that around and we identify what do you want to feel in your life talk to me about five to seven core feelings that you want to feel in a week We break that down the first by defining it. What does that look like for you? So if you're choosing something like connected, are we talking about connected to nature? Are we talking about connected to relationships, connected to, you know, your body, mind, and spirit, if that's something that is important to you, define it for yourself and then break that down into, you know, at first, just two to three activities that you could do that are within your control that would contribute to that feeling on a daily or weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And so I drill it into clients' heads forever and ever. The first question that should pop into your head, aside from your top three priorities when you're sitting on the toilet, is <laughs> what do I want to feel today? And if you're picking from this manageable list of feelings, 
then you can easily go to this cheat sheet that we develop of, okay, I want to feel connected. What feels doable today according to my energy? What feels accessible today? And some of those will cost money and some of them won't. Some mm-hmm. of them will involve people. Some of them will just be about yourself. But it's a good kind of control because we can pick from that list. And we know that when we engage in that activity, it's going to bring us the feeling that we want. Mm -hmm. And so our goals matter that much more to us because we've evaluated what we want to feel. And and I think, you know, what you're talking about with I will need to lose 60 pounds before summer. It's that I hope I feel good. I hope I feel confident, but they have no clue what feelings and emotions are going to pop up in the process of losing weight or what it costs you to get the, the, the weight to fall off. hundred percent. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Thank you for that contribution. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like that you mentioned to compare, comparing yourself to societal standards, because that's something that we often run into. Well, my cousin who was doing say keto or whatever it was, and mm-hmm. they lost this much in this month. Well, you're comparing your chapter three to somebody else's chapter 17, maybe like it's, it's two completely different journeys. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not the journey you're on. And, and that's really, really important to realize. And that's the one downfall I find to a community on this journey is people will always share when they're doing very well. And so in, in our group setting, you often see people doing well, but it circles because everybody mm-hmm. goes through phases. So, so if maybe five people are doing well this week and a different five might be doing well next week. But if you aren't doing well, sometimes it's hard to see everybody else doing well, but um, it, it's, it's certainly, uh, it's, it helps to have that group for, for the wins, but it also helps when we get on those coaching calls, those group coaching calls to talk about the obstacles, the struggles and what mm-hmm. is going as well, because I think that's, equally if not more important for people to see that other people do struggle on their journey but because you're comparing chapter three to somebody else's chapter 17 they just struggled at a different point you know and you're using the word struggle and i I listened to your podcast well i listened to your podcast as a general statement but specifically the one on plateaus that you just did last week you know it was something brand new for me you know you've talked about plateaus before to expect them you know here you, you can troubleshoot some of the reasons that you have them but what i had not heard before in any of the calls was when you and jerica were talking about this is your body adjusting to my new normal mm. and then you know you've talked about maintenance stage before and i thought that was really great but the way it was framed in that particular podcast about celebrating the fact that you got to this new normal and your body's like, Hey, this is wonderful. Yeah, That's what a plateau is. Okay. I can stay there for a week and not yes. be pissy about it. Um, so I thought I, that was, that was very helpful. Cool. And, and it's, it's so important to say this stuff over and over and over again, because I'm going to say it slightly different each time. The other coach, Jerica, she's going to say it different mm-hmm. each time. And sooner or later, it's going to resonate with somebody a little bit differently, just like that message did to you. So that's this that is why is... you have many coaches, people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's amazing. Um, mm-hmm. Thanks for that feedback. Yeah. Um, cool. So I want to give you an opportunity now, if you want to, um, if you quickly want to mention anything to do with, with what's going on in your business, how people can contact you. Sure. Um, and, and if they're looking to work with you, what, what that could look like. Sure. So anyone who's interested in the intuitive sessions that, that I was, uh, or that I am offering, you can go to the website by and there's a contact us page. You can submit a form it, uh, you get to choose Karen or Kelly. My mom does the exact same thing in terms of intuitive readings and we see clients interchangeably. So if that's, you know, if she's someone that you want to access, that's great. You can find us both there when it comes to coaching, you can go to the website, do the exact same thing and request coaching for myself. It does involve an assessment first with no commitments whatsoever. It's just an opportunity for you guys and myself to sit down to say, you know, what are you looking for? What, what's causing you distress? And essentially I've always said to clients or uh, prospective clients, 
you're interviewing me to see if I'm the right person mm -hmm. for you, if it's a good fit and a good feel, if you're comfortable divulging things to me. I'm also taking in that information to make sure that what you're looking for is within my realm of expertise. And if that's not the case, I'm doing my best to figure out who can I refer you to so that you can get the resources that you actually need. So that assessment period um, is about an hour and a half if people are interested in that. And I develop a tailored program from the assessment where I put together a bunch of proposals specifically for you so that it's not cookie cutter. And we work on the things um, that you're wanting help for in your life and, and to offer you those tools so that you can implement them and see change quickly. Um, so that's all through the website. I will also say that if you're interested, um, I do have two podcast shows. So it's on all the major podcast platforms and it's called Coffee with the Sarlos. So my mom and I host uh, that show. It's a lot of fun. They are hard hitting messages, a lot about the intuitive sessions that we, that we do where we share client stories upholding confidentiality, of course. Um, there's a lot of really, really great life lessons in there, um, really helpful things for communication and emotional intelligence is our big thing, which leads me into the second podcast, and that is Sips of Sanity. So it's a mini, it's a mini series, pardon me. It runs the first week of every month from Monday to Friday. Um, and the first one is free. So anyone in the public can listen to that on the website or major podcast platforms. The rest of them are found at our Patreon platform. So this is a creator's um, platform where we can monetize, which is wonderful because we're two small businesses and it means that you're putting money directly into our pockets to support us uh, to continue making that content. This is our platform where we have tons of monthly material for emotional and intuitive intelligence. So communication skills, critical thinking. Um, we have a brand new book club as well where we are taking um, best sellers, let's say, and we're actually breaking it down for people what are healthy statements, what are unhealthy beliefs that are con um, contributing to the conditioning of unhealthy beliefs in this world. So that's been a lot of fun. So over on patreon.com forward slash by Sarlo, there's a bunch of tiers you can choose from. Look at the benefits there. And Alex and I were chatting beforehand. Um, I would love to be able to offer anyone who's listening to this podcast and who is interested. Um, if you do want to sign up for coaching, I'm happy to offer anyone a discount on a program if you're using the code Alex20. So that'll be 20% off a life coaching program if that's something that you want to pursue. Amazing. And and I will, uh, I'll make sure that all of these links for you, your website, your podcast, your Patreon, we can put all of these in the show notes to make it easier for people to find them. Thank you. Um, and, and for anybody listening, check out Kelly's podcast what, like regardless of what your goals are um, you hear me talk about whole health a lot it's really important to me so what whole health is it's 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 everything from our strength and mobility and endurance to our nutrition and our sleep health and our mental health and our emotional health and all of these different branches of whole health strengthen one another or weaken one another and i think there's so much value to be found in what you're doing kelly um, you. that can strengthen what we are doing so for for people listening to this even if you've never considered some of the different avenues of that whole health i think it's really important to explore that and i think you can explore a lot of that with what kelly is doing so make sure you check that out thank you um also for anybody listening to this make sure you leave us uh some reviews it it, it whether it's a personal review on iTunes or Spotify or whatever platform you're listening to this on, or even a direct message. I love to get those reviews, um, comments, feedback, what you guys got, got from this, what you found beneficial, what you'd love to see in the future. That's all so beneficial for us as we grow this podcast. And subscribe. Um, and subscribe. <laughs> see, she's the pro. She's helping me here. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, thanks for listening, guys. As always, have a great day and we appreciate you being here.